Namaskaram. I am Sujatha Ramalingam. Basically, I am from Chennai, Tamil Nadu, and uh, studied under the great supervision of uh, Srimati Rukmini Devi Arundel, the institution Kalakshetra in Chennai. I did my post graduation from Kalakshetra at, in the year 74 80. After that, I joined uh, Chandralekha. In that time, she wanted to really uh, bring, uh, bring in the elements of Bharatanatyam in the contemporary way. So, it was a great experience working with her. When Kalakshetra taught me the techniques, uh, the movements, the Abhinaya, everything, here in Chandra, we worked with the body, mainly the Angika. The first production was called Angika. So, how to work with the body? What is the main motive of working with the body? So, we learnt yoga, we learnt uh, chow, we learnt martial arts. So, how all the techniques, I mean like each has a basic, is, I mean there are some connections in the basics. So, in that way it was a great experience working with Chandra, mainly with the body. And um, I would say rather, yeah, in that time, that is in 82, uh, when I started working with her is in uh, the year 1982, that time it was uh, way ahead of whatever was there in 1982. Uh, she, her vision was wide, she was more, uh, even though she talked about the lines of the body and everything and uh, it was a group choreography, how to work with the group, how to show the geometrical uh, movements through the dance. Uh, it is called Anga Mandala, how the steps can be used in three speeds in different positions. That was her first production, Anga Mandala. Then she moved on to Angika, how to work with the body. Then again she came back to the elements of Bharatanatyam, pure Bharatanatyam. It is Leelhavati, the mathematician, the Bhaskaracharya, how the slokas she took and uh, she composed, choreographed with the elements of Bharatanatyam. So, then she worked with yoga that is prana, uh, with dance. So, mostly she connected everything with dance and uh, the improvisation of Bharatanatyam in different ways. So, I can say it is Bharatanatyam and beyond. So, that way it was a great experience and I would rather say, yeah, that time. Now, after that, so many people have followed her and did lot of things. Now people are still doing lot of things. So, but I would rather say, yeah, first, I, at least myself, I learnt everything from Chandra, uh, the movements, uh, how to work with the body, how to look into the eyes of other person. When we are dancing, we, we look into the person in front of us, but not really communicate with them. How to communicate with them uh, very closely. So, uh, it was all exercises were given. I was not even able to look at a person's eyes and talk. But after that, I was able to look at a person's eyes and talk. The exercises were given. I mean, how to work with your body, show your body. While discussing about uh, the evolutionary process of Manipuri dance, it cannot be said in a very short time, in very few words. And the process, it goes back to the pre-colonial times, then the post-colonial, the nomenclature of Manipuri, how it has become classical, the classicization of the dance form after um, independence. And uh, it, has, it is a long trajectory. Satya dance form introduced by Mahaprabhu Srimanda Sankaradevo, a great saint, philosopher, dramatist of Assam, in the last part of the 15th century, as a medium of, to please his wisdom of faith in Assam. And, uh, with this philosophy we are going on and uh, but it is a part of worship in our sutra 
সত্রের যে বৈষ্ণব মানিস্টারি ওই বৈষ্ণব মঠ আবার সাম এটি যে পার্ট অফ ওয়ার্ল্ড শিপ ইন দ্য সত্র প্ল্যাটফর্ম বাট নাও উই আর টেকিং ইট ফ্রম দ্য সত্র প্ল্যাটফর্ম টু আওয়ার মডার্ন স্টেজ অ্যান্ড উই আর ট্রাইং টু এস্টাবলিশ ইট এজ এ পারফরমিং আর্ট ফর্ম আই থিঙ্ক দ্যাট উইদাউট এনি কম্প্রোমাইজ উই আর টেকিং ইট টু দ্য মডার্ন প্ল্যাটফর্ম টু এস্টাবলিশ এজ এ পারফরমিং আর্ট ফর্ম So if we start looking back from the 13th century where the male dancers were addressed as natwas and the female dancers were addressed as patur uh, uh, so from that time and at that time the the form were, didn't have a specific name also so it was nach just nach it is only in 1936-37 when um, it got its name as kathak you know the growth has been stupendous in a technically uh, costume wise attire uh, instruments that are used uh, theme and presentation makeup so everything has has been fine tuned and balanced what we what we see today so the growth is really really commendable and uh, beautiful and it's beautiful i when i teach in my class i always give importance on the uh our tradition understood so to make a dancer body perfect in odissi dance i do many body exercise to make it not strong to make it loose not the strong exercises so i always do how to body make to fit a body to fit in the, the odissi dance field because odissi is very lyrical dance it's not strong so you have to so i always give you uh, importance on teaching uh, first they make how to prepare like preparation to before i teach something one item or whatever so i do many exercises wh- which makes body flexibility and i always keep my tradition very strongly because i follow my gurus this much first to be a dancer you have to work minimum 4 to 5 hours every day with a good guru otherwise the whatever you work for 5 hours it will be lost it will be lost no value so you need to be a good dancer to to attract the audience so you have to do every day 4 to 5 hours of exercises then it's a dance means it's a glamorous uh, thing so glamorous things means you should look attractive also otherwise nobody will look at, at you so to be so uh, to be for the new audience they should see the very good dancers otherwise they will say this is a very bad dance style and they will leave the, they will not never come to see it again Namaste. I am Kalamandalam Bengit Raman. Everyone knows me as Kalamandalam Bengit. I am a Kathakali dancer working in the Ravindrabad University as an associate professor. First of all, I want to tell you, Kathakali is a very good boy. But that is because of the huge the dresses and makeup and everything. But when are, when are they learning, starting to learn? One of the people who are very happy to accept it. Our Prochus students are there. They like Kadagali very much. Even for the, some other compositions also, they are using the Kadagali movements and Kadagali 
technique and everything so many vigorous characters and the soft characters when they are using the kathakali technique and mudras and abhinayam amar naam gaur kumar amar gram bari ei torang grame amra ek chotto chashi poribarer manus amra sei chotto chash ni amader kono chole na tai amra naach gaan bajna to ei নিয়মত হয়ে থাকি এবং ছৌ নাচটাই আমার হচ্ছে মূল ছৌ নাচটা আমি দেশে বিদেশে বিভিন্ন জায়গাতে প্রোগ্রাম করে আসছি এবং এই প্রোগ্রাম হলো আমার জীবনের জীবিকা এই ছৌ নাচকে আমি খুব ভালোবাসি এই গান বাজনায় ছৌ নাচটা বেশি আমি গুরুত্ব দিয়েছি ছৌ নাচ আমি ছোটোর বেলা থেকে বেশ ছোটোর থেকে আমার বাপ ঠাকুর দাদা বা বিভিন্ন গুরুজন আমাকে ছৌ নাচ শিক্ষা দিয়েছেন তারপরে ওনারা যাওয়ার পরে এই ছৌ নৃত্যকে আমি বিভিন্ন জায়গার গ্রামের গঞ্জের ছেলেদের শিক্ষা দিয়েছি এবং শিক্ষা দিচ্ছি এবং এই ছৌ নাচ আমি খুব ভালোবাসি খুব ভালোবাসি এই ছৌ নাচ আমাদের আজ ভারতবর্ষের এক ঐতিহ্য অ্যাজ এ প্র্যাকটিশনার অ্যান্ড অ্যাজ এ টিচার আই হ্যাভ বিন গোয়িং থ্রু দিস ক্রুশিয়াল ইয়ার্স অফ মোহিনী আটম where it has gone undergone several levels of transitions and transformations being an ekahari andarta it got into major platforms where a lot of uh, thoughtful thought provoking uh, concepts has been done by several dancers for the past de- one decade or one or two decades I feel that classical dances in general has gone through uh, several uh, changes according to the con- need of the contemporary times. As a teacher, I would say that how we have imbibed this art form is itself has a lot of strength, a lot of uh, purposefulness now when you change the need for a particular purpose say for a catchy stage show kind of thing it becomes repetitive hence as a teacher i would like to give the strength and the belief which is very important for the youngsters in the form which they can uh experiment it they have, they have they have freedom to experiment at the same time the value of the art forms is embedded or deeply uh you know k- kind of uh, sits in its classicism itself so i stand for this and uh, it's n- it's not uh, uh l- no it won't be uh true if i say that there are so many contemporary works which uh, i have been seeing but uh, it becomes of often very repetitive and same for any art form i always believe that tradition is not a burden carrying tradition along with us taking it taking tradition for the future generation that's the thing master garu he was he followed that principle that's why he could able to do this art form so popular he brought he from the village keeping kept the tradition properly and and along with that along with tradition he brought the revolution in this art form and also the artist doesn't need any language means not artist is art form doesn't need a doesn't need any medium if you are a good artist you should be able to uh, show the show the emotion show Uh, to make the uh, audience understand through your expression that is art according
according to uh, me, I always believe that. You see, in our home with a child, at that time, it was performed by all, only by the male performer. It is a male only the dance form. At that time, with the, all the boys are performing this dance form. And, but when we are taking the short of this form to our modern stage, Oceanian stage, uh, we are taking girls. And now it is a girls dominated dance form outside the Sutra. And uh, this, in this journey, uh, we have to change some uh, in, the, in costume, in ornaments, yeah, uh, also in style of performance also. So I think uh, we, um, in my time, when I was a student of this dance form, at that time it was a purely male-oriented dance form, but now it is going to be female-oriented dance form. So we have to sense something uh, in the performance, in the costume, ornaments in this way. But we are not compromising in our philosophy. It took really decades for the dance to be accepted and recognized. And thanks to my guru and some other people who motivated and helped him, uh, in which Kumudini Lakhiaji, our great uh, uh, senior, uh, Keshav Kuthari ji, who happened to be uh, the uh, secretary later of Sagit Natak, and so many other people who uh, influenced Maharaj ji and counseled Maharaj ji to think of ways of how to harness, how to lure, how to catch the audience. If we can make an audience, then only we can sustain. Agar dekhnei wala nahi hua, to artists kaha survive karega. If there is no appreciation, then there is no appreciation. So, uh, so gradually, now coming to the exact point, I saw Maharaji when I was about 12 or 13 years old. He started doing, he had done a few group compositions earlier, but dance drama, ke se, um, the biggest, the best popular one was Krishna, the life story of Krishna or some other historical uh, dance dramas like Wazid Ali Shah Ki Jeevan Pe, uh, Shah Niyavad. But because there was a story behind the presentation, each dance item may be Krishna solo or Radha solo or a group dance happening within this. Because there was a story, because the audiences understood the flow of the uh, thing which is happening, the story which is happening, so through that, they started to recognize, okay, Krishna's dance with all these tukras, they didn't know what a tukra was, but some movement, some footwork, some something different. Ya Radha, ya group mein kuch tarana element, ya kuch sargam element. With the unknowingly, they would start to enjoy and appreciate and get into the feel of it. So these dramas, dance dramas were very, very, effective on the common audiences. Bilkul jo anadi jisko kehte hain, completely uninitiated. To uh, Shania Vad, which was on Mughal era. So all the ghazal, rubai, these things were enjoyable for the audience. To usme bhi, uh, ya Kumar Sambhav, Shiv ka dance alag ho raha hai, Kartik ka alag ho raha hai. To each one then the audiences started to understand the difference between the dance, patterns of dance. And thereafter, gradually, Maharaji went into contemporary uh, group presentations. Next, uh, how to reach the wider audience, wider audiences through dance. See, when I came to Bengal, the language, language was a problem uh, for the audience to understand Tamil. When I teach the students, I have to teach them the meaning, the word, everything, and then I make them understand. But audience, we can't, we just say the gist of the varnam or a padam or whatever we are doing, and we make the audience, we try to make the audience understand. It is not, the audience is not all the dancers. There are different people come to watch the dance. 
so maybe first it is i mean like language is a barrier so i thought why don't we change the language so i have composed some bengali um, uh, songs like rabindra sangeet in bharatanatyam and maybe uh, maybe i am trying now i will uh, i mean like i am trying to do a repertoire full in bengali language so that because i am living in bengal being a tamilian i have come to calcutta i am living in bengal so now i am trying to uh, produce a repertoire that is alaripu jatishwaram what we have in bharatanatyam in bengali language i am trying so in this way i thought it be easier to attract the audience through the language and uh, as i spoke before about chandra so contemporary work always we talk about only the uh, the god goddesses uh, shiva vishnu parvati uh, saraswati lakshmi and why not the social thing like a woman maybe now recently i mean like so many people are doing so many things maybe the life of rukmini devi arundel itself can be portrayed and maybe we can show it so how the dance was for uh, came into um, being so the people can relate so maybe a social story uh, maybe i have in mind of doing a fairy tale also why not in bharatanatyam a fairy tale so a lot of things like this maybe can attract the audiences those who can relate with the dance so in this way i think we can do a lot of things to attract more audience to this classical dance form thank you first you the dancer should make his uh, basics perfect and how to present properly so it's also a divine dance style it's not like it's a commercial dance style so it's very divine just it it is from uh, jagannath temple from lingaraj temple from uh, brahmeshwar temple from mukteswar temple it's from khandagiri so you can go and everywhere and it's very hard it's very odissi is really really very hard 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 dance style so the dancer should make the waist from the uh, below part of the body from waist to the feet stronger and from the upper part should be very flexible and uh, just uh, you can, they can use any moments like uh, the that should look nice so need proper guide and to attract the audience just the dancer should be good otherwise it's it will never click for the new even even someone is coming to see the first time audience then oh, as a audience to see what he see when say bad dancer then he will say i will never learn this dance i will never see this dance so this is a impact so if you are good dancer then it attracts the audience then they try, they try to oh this, this, i should learn it or i should where is the show next show i should go and watch it this much you know um i feel that whenever one does anything anything with conviction hmm, with in depth understanding and training of course and with conviction it is conveyed beautifully no matter who your audience is if you have the command the understanding of a form whether it is a dance form or music or anything or i would say indian or, or you know western or whatever if you have to have that sound training understanding and when you deliver you should deliver with conviction complete conviction so when you do that people are people are able to relate you know they get to see your efforts the challenges that you communicate because any form any performing art form has an the performance itself talks about 
the hardship that must have gone into it you know so be it a contemporary theme or a a, a, a traditional theme from the uh, indian mythology or or a folklore or a, a subject which is globally appropriate uh, where we talk about human approach a love a connection heart to heart connection with people and performing in arts is all about that you just have to understand how to connect with the audience now about the audience mainly i will tell you the foreigners are so much interested for the seeing the kathakali so much audience last two years back i went to uh, one of my tour in uh, us i was there two, mo two months and st done some workshops and programs there was huge audience they were enjoying they were asking how you are doing the movements and everything they are so much interested because of the huge characters and makeup the long audience can understand what they are we are doing but previously very short, long back actually this is a temple art form because in the temple the small uh, stage and the audience will be very close so that is why the brahmins only the brahmins they used to see the kathakali program but now not like that now all the audience they are enjoying and the all we are having the all night program a full night from evening 6 to early morning 6 637 the audience are there they are very much interested even some we we do some mistakes they will sort out that one you are doing that mistake why do you like that even th that kind of audience also there they are so much interested the traditional uh, manipuri drum is known as pung and uh, it is played in all uh, rituals in manipur it is considered to be an incarnation of lord krishna and there was a time when pung was not allowed uh, to be touched by women again many exponents of manipuri dance they uh, struggled against this fought against this um, rule this social rule and um, slowly things have started changing but still there are many orthodox exponents who do not support the pung being played by women in very ritual uh, in religious spaces like for example uh, the temple precinct of shri shri govinda ji temple pung should not be played by a woman in the proscenium on the proscenium of course the scene is different and uh, my father guru bipin singh was one of the main exponents who had uh, who believed that to be a complete dancer one must know how to play pung so um, there's an uh, composition there's a composition named mridang vadan which is uh, a display of intricate rhythm patterns and he taught Uh, this to all his students and um, there are many choreographers who use um, this mridang vadan and uh, mridang vadan in their choreographies i have personally used movements of pung cholom the pung cholom or the dance with the drum they have such intricate movements uh, very graceful and vigorous at the same time many acrobatic feats those i have used in my choreographies following the footsteps of my parents who have imbibed these uh, incorporated these movements and these stances in their compositions so even i have done that um and pung still remains a very it occupies a very sanctified uh, place in all the lives uh, in the lives of all the manipuri dancers এই ছৌ নাচ পূর্বপুরুষ ধরে চলে আসছে এই ছৌ নাচ এখন এমন ইতিহাস হয়ে গেছে যে আমাদের 
গ্রামে ছোট ছোট ছেলে মেয়েরা সবাই বিদেশে প্রোগ্রাম করার জন্য বা ভালো জায়গাতে প্রোগ্রাম করার জন্য সবার ইচ্ছুক এবং ছো নাচ এমন জিনিস যে আমরা একে নিয়ে ভুলে থাকি একে নিয়ে ভুলে থাকি আর এ আমাদের প্রাণ এখন এই ছো নৃত্য আমাদের গ্রামে গঞ্জের সব মেয়ে ছেলেরা এই ছো নৃত্যর উপরে গুরুত্ব দিয়েছে তারা আবার সেই আসরে স্টেজে গিয়ে ছো নাচের প্রোগ্রাম শুরু করে দিয়েছে boys and girls both so i because uh, uh, in the experiment, experiment in my life after a ladki girl uh, getting married then they left dance so all hard work just finish to the garbage so so i i decided if the girls are coming i will teach so i will never say no but boys are just very sincere and uh, and they give time so those are interested maybe boy maybe girl so it does not matter matter on just who can, who is working hard so i give impo, uh, when i see saw a girl is doing hard work then i am giving importance then if a boy is very good in dance field so i give importance too and uh, because i mean nowadays i am doing odissee uh, on male dancers because uh, in fast when the my gurus they teach only females and not good 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 gurus and uh, so only gurus teaches only female dancers and all items are uh, choreographed on females so no non item is on males so i i thought i should do it work on it uh, then i i taught my boys and i do choreography differently from girls <coughs> then i am touring with my boys everywhere all, all over the globe thank you manipuri dance compared to the other dance forms it is uh, not so very well was not rather so very well portrayed in the cultural map of the world but uh, then people the general mass or the audience they have a feeling they are, even the patrons of art they always think that manipuri dance looks best in as amongst the ensemble of other dance forms when they wear the big round costume that that is a typical costume that is uh, that we wear only during ras leelas and they think that only in those ensembles manipuri dance can be best viewed otherwise it is very monotonous the movements are very boring uh, repetitive and dancers are uh, trying to break this notion that you know it is not as simple as it and but when we are performing or when we are based in a outside manipur for us like dancers in a diaspora we have to you know think of toolkits to make this dance for more popular to the audience to the uninitiated audience again keeping in mind the fact that manipuri dance is a living tradition we cannot um, uh, sort of tamper it